Now let's talk about some sorting algorithms. So first of all, bubble sort, a classic of this genre. So sorting algorithms put an unordered list in order, so ascending, descending, alphabetical, etc. And bubble sort works in passes, so it'll go a pass is going from a first element to the last element. And what the, the, the name comes from, the largest value, if it's ascending, bubbles towards the end. And it does this using comparisons between pairs and then swapping if they're out of order. So that won't make sense necessarily right now. I'll show you an example in a second. So the way this works is you start at the beginning of the list and make a pass along it, comparing adjacent values. If they're in order, you leave them. If they're not in order, you swap them. So this is the pair comparison and swapping if they're out of order. And then you repeat this um, until you complete a pass without any swap. So this is just for one pass and you repeat this until you don't have to swap anything. But as I say, I'll show you this in a second. Okay, so we've got a list and we want to put it in ascending order using bubble sorts. So let's follow this sort of instruction then. So we start at the beginning of the list and make a pass along it. So I'm going to show you one pass and then I will skip the other pass because this is very tedious to do as most algorithms are if you actually follow it by hand. So first of all we want to compare 9 and 5. Are they in order? Well they're not because we need to swap them because it needs to be in ascending order. So we basically will just write down 9 and 5 and I'm not going to write out the rest of the list each time because that game is a bit of a waste of time. So what you can next do, you now, you now 9 is now in the second position so you now compare 9 with 6. 6 is also less than 9 so you swap them you now then compare 9 and 7, 7 is less than 9 so you swap them, uh, 9 and 8, 8 is less than 9 so it's what you can see I've deliberately done something here so you can see 9 essentially bubbling towards the end as I say earlier so 9 again is greater than 2 so 2, 9 this is roughly in line, 4 is less than 9 and then 9 is uh, greater than 7, so 9 bubbles towards the end and again you could write out the rest of um, the list each time but you don't really need to to see what's happening. So 9 bubbles towards the end and now you can leave 9 in the next pass, this is only one pass, this is our first pass at this problem and 9 is now sort of sorted, so 9 is the largest in the list and it's bubbled towards the end. Okay, to spare you my handwriting, here's our result from the first pass. So 9 is sort of sorted already, it's almost like it's a partition within the list. So after the second pass, 8 bubbles towards the end, it's the second largest, so now these are kind of separate. After the third pass, 7 bubbles towards the end, we've got two 7s, which doesn't make too much difference actually in sort of a general sense. After pass 4, the other 7 gets added in this order. After pass 5, 6, and then it's actually ordered at this stage, but we have to do a final pass. You've got to remember this is done by a computer. We can notice that this is an order, but a computer has to be sure. And the way it can be sure is it goes through the pass without actually swapping anything. This is how it knows when to terminate because it's sorted. So this is our final result. Let's now look at a slightly more complicated algorithm, I'm afraid, but a much more useful one. It's much more efficient than bubble sort. Merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm is a few is a class of algorithm divide and conquer and in the divide step the input list is split into two lists of similar size and in the conquer step both sub lists are sorted recursively and recursively means to call the algorithm from within the algorithm so it's repeating the algorithm for each sub list which may not make a lot of sense so you can kind of understand merge sort without knowing how it works recursively but it's useful to know because recursive behavior is very common in computer science as you move forward. But ignore it for now, to combine it you then have to merge your sorted sublist into one sorted list. So to kind of go through the algorithm in simpler terms without talking about recursion, first of all you're dividing the list until each sublist contains one element, so a one element sublist is taken to be sorted because it is effectively sorted. It then has to repeatedly merge these sublists, these sorted sublists to produce new sorted sublists until you only have one sublist which is your not, well, it's not actually a sublist, it's your output. And this is a GIF which is, comes from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is quite good for algorithms actually. It's showing you the merging step now. But we'll show you it, I'll show it myself. So we're going to have our input list here and we're going to end up with our output here. So the first step is to divide this until we get to a step where each sublist is of length 1, so it's sorted. So we're dividing this into two equal size sublists, not actually doing anything to all of them at this stage. And this is where the recursion comes in at this step. So effectively now, the algorithm is calling itself on each sublist. So 
it takes two four and one to be the input sublist, so it divides this again into two separate lists. Again, you don't really have to understand recursion to just know that it keeps splitting it until it gets to size one, until each sublist is of size one. But these are two distinct recursion calls. So we've we've now done the the divide step because each are of size one. We then have to actually conquer them and then merge the results. So to conquer, we need to sort it in this case. So two and four are kind of sorted and merged together. Uh, one and five are again in order, so that's fine. But nine and three have to be swapped. And then we have to combine the steps from each of these. So two and four and one and five. What it will do, it will look at the two smallest elements and can and compare them. So one is less than two, so one goes at the front. Five is greater than four, so five goes towards the end. And three and nine, it's on its own because we have an even number it's, or an odd number. It's slightly awkward. But then we can combine these finally by going well three is greater than one and greater than two so three slots in the third position and nine is greater than five so nine goes towards the end so we're dividing it at the first stage and then we're merging them to ensure they're sorted but it actually works with recursion because it repeats the algorithm for each sublist effectively but you don't need to necessarily understand that to know that this is our output we get from using merge sort Let's just compare bubble sort and merge sort in terms of their efficiencies then. So in the worst in the worst case scenario again, bubble sort is less efficient than merge sort because if we have the same input size of n, bubble sort behaves like an n squared graph, whereas merge sort, if you plotted it, would be more like n log n, which is which diverges from an n squared graph as you increase the input size. So again, the graphs don't make sense, particularly this isn't something we can relate to uh, just by having gone through the algorithms, but this is just a mathematical model. And the whole idea is to see how these algorithms behave as you scale them, as you increase the input size. You just want to see how they're going to behave over a large input. Just to wrap up, I wanted to talk about choosing an algorithm of factors that might affect that. So clearly we've only looked at two cases, so sorting and searching and there are millions of algorithms that do very specific things and clearly they're only going to work with certain types of data. I mean even like Google search is an algorithm but it's not <laughs> working in any of the same way we've looked at our searching algorithms, it's clearly got a different input and uses different data structures. So some algorithms will use an array, some will use a graph, some will use um, any um, input really you can imagine. So it's an example of two different algorithms that work in different ways based on their data structure. So these are uh, this is breadth first search and this is depth first search, you don't need to know about them. But they use different data structures, one uses a queue, one uses a stack to operate. They have very similar code but they work in completely different ways just due to using two different data structures. So that's a big factor. And we've mentioned that for searching for our basic searching algorithms you almost need to sort it first to use them. You always almost always need to unless you're going to use linear search. So that's a factor. And finally, sometimes you need, sometimes algorithms need very specific cases to be true for them to work well. So, for example, radix sort is another sorting algorithm you don't need to know about, but it almost needs large integers in the list for it to be able to be more efficient than others. So, it might need a list of, say, 5,000, 10,000. 2000, so longer numbers than what we've been dealing with to be more efficient. So there are special cases always for algorithms.